second section of the fourth M plus matters. And this thing called M plus matters is, is something that has grown out of, I guess, the work we're going through, the process we're going through in creating a new museum from scratch. And not just any new museum, but actually a museum that on one hand tries to stay recognizable as a museum, maintain the values um, and the symbolic value a museum has and the many of the functions, but at the same time try to rethink what a museum, and in the, our case, a museum of visual culture can be. Um, and when you do that, and you do, try to do it from actually looking at, from a perspective of now, and also doing it, uh, being totally aware of the fact that you're creating a, what is called a global museum, but with a, from a, seen from a Hong Kong perspective. <coughs> Sorry, we do now and then end up in discussions or situations where we see we can't really sort of figure out exactly which way to go. Even though we have a curatorial team now that I must say is Im immensely smart and fantastic. There are moments when, you know, we are a little bit at a cross section and, and we have to take decisions on how to move forward or how not to move forward perhaps. And in those instances, we call an M plus uh, matters. And these are really some sort of micro think tanks. On one hand, we basically think through who out there in the world or in Hong Kong or elsewhere, but outside our organization can sort of help us sort of provide, give us new ideas on, on the situation we're in, the questions we, we're struggling with. So we call upon the smartest people around the world, basically, to come to Hong Kong for a couple of days and sit together with the curatorial team and maybe a few others invited from Hong Kong, from the outside, to sort of hammer things through and debate things and, and, and discuss them and see whether we can reach another level of clarity and to sort of, so we can move forward or not. And around those, we try to also create situations where we, uh, those who've come here and traveled who have a fantastic expertise and, and come with different backgrounds that they also can share a little bit of the thinking around these various topics with a wider audience in Hong Kong. Because of course, I mean, we're not only building a museum, we're really trying to continue and help being part of building a community around the museum and around the whole sort of visual culture community in Hong Kong. Visual culture then sort of tentatively meaning art, design, architecture, moving image, and so forth. So this is actually the second session uh, around the fourth M plus matches. There was one on Friday also. And I'll leave it over to Pauline Yao, uh, one in our curatorial team who's been sort of running this, not alone, but surely driving this M plus matter and to let her sort of introduce uh, and talk a little bit about what we've been doing, what we've been doing in the weekend, but also what we're about to hear now. So, Pauline, please come up to the stage so I can leave it. Thank you, and welcome. Good evening, everybody. Um, wow, okay, there's a lot of events going on this week, and so I really appreciate everybody um, being here. And there's a little bit of a spotlight right in my eyes, so I'll try not to, to squint too much. Um, the title of uh, this program and this workshop is uh, M Plus Matters Artwork Documentation. Uh, this name is uh, obviously an, it's an invented name that we've come up with uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one of those is to sort of put these categories of art, uh, artwork, uh, work, and document or documentation or documentary on an equal kind of playing field and, and in a sort of seamless uh, um, designation where there's, we've sort of eliminated the usual uh, hierarchies and have eliminated the, the um, need to have one different categorizations and trying to invent one overall grouping. Um, another, another reason of doing that is to, to sort of try to think about inventing um, a, a, a totally new designation where these hierarchies that we've maybe become very familiar with in art of having, you know, maybe either it's a uh, hierarchy between um, original and uh, copy or in, you know, in um, 
high art, low art, uh, these sort of traditional uh, boundaries, we've, we've tried to sort of eliminate those and c come up with some other kind of category that embodies all of these things um, in, in one. Uh, the task of building a museum of visual culture at this moment is both exhilarating uh, and exciting, but is certainly not without uh, certain kinds of challenges and hurdles. We happen to be living in a moment and in time and place in the world in which the usual divisions between art, design, and the image, uh, and, and also the object, are becoming increasingly porous. In the current landscape of contemporary art, which has been variously described as, as post-media, uh, post-studio, um, you know, or post-white cube, uh, or anti-aesthetic, or, or, or de-skilled, so, you know, um, the nature of fabrication and, and how, how artworks are made is, uh, is, is all very open-ended at this particular moment. Um, we can find that art today is, it has become increasingly difficult to pinpoint, uh, much less to categorize what distinguishes art from ordinary objects. Uh, art today is no longer constrained by specific materials or styles, uh, nor is it bound by uh, common theories or languages. Uh, more and more we can find the influx of, of documentary forms, so items and, and footage and materials from, from daily life or from those sort of uh, real events and real situations, social, political situations, uh, entering into contemporary art either through film um, and video media or through different kinds of socially uh, engaged practices which happen you know, outside of a gallery space, maybe on the street or um, in the privacy of, of uh, uh, one's home or, or in other kinds of maybe uh, private spaces uh, for, for, or if that the artist has uh, carved out as, as a space for creating um, their art. Uh, similarly, in the field of design and architecture, one can witness uh, renewed interest in unauthored or DIY objects or simply you know, any kind of um, daily life objects that, that are designed and that live and coexist in, in our worlds. And these kinds of things are creeping more and more into um, the space of the museum. So it is these blurring of boundaries and realigning of practices uh, under the rubric of visual culture which made us decide to organize this workshop to essentially to rethink the nature of categorizations um, in itself and, and through that to then think of how we can categorize or maybe not categorize these differences between um, art and, and non-art or art and uh, documentation. Uh, the way that the format of this workshop has been is followed some of the other M plus matters, which is we would have, uh, in this case, we had a public event on Friday night, which was focused on uh, photojournalism and, and photography in China. And then we've had a two-day sort of closed door workshop. Uh, and we had uh, in, in our you know, lovely uh, West Kowloon uh, uh, conference room, we had our nine speakers. Um, with, we had divided into different sections and everyone made presentations. And, um, and then today we'll, we have a kind of selected uh, group, uh, these four speakers who will be presenting um, their papers in a slightly abbreviated uh, form. So in these three sections over the last two days, we, I divided the workshop into different sorts of categories and, and thematic topics to try to address uh, the, this very wide uh, subject. Uh, in our first section, which, was, which we titled Art and the Documentary Image, we heard from uh, artist Ken Lum, uh, filmmaker and artist and curator Park Chan Kyung, and Guangzhou-based photo critic uh, Yang Xiaoyan and each presented papers that looked at the ways in which artists situate, situate themselves in the world, how engagements with the real world or uh, real events can um, sometimes lead to a more sort of heightened uh, emotional response and how increasing interest to reformulate, uh, rearrange uh, existing reality or maybe facets of daily life um, became a kind of a, a new way of making art uh, it's just this sort of notion of reformulating what is already out there rather than necessarily having to create something um, new or, or having a kind of uh, in, uh, starting from a place of, of, of artifice is starting from a place of, of, of reality. 
um, in, in, this, uh, in this process and doing this kind of reformulation. Um, we talked about how artists and artistic practices use these new methods to kind of reach some, uh, maybe some new level of truth. Uh, and that, that, of course, did open you know, it, it, a bunch of uh, interesting uh, conversation. And in, in all these cases, in these workshops, these presentations um, are also followed by a, a good deal of time that we have to discuss uh, internally some of, the, some of the topics raised in, in the individual papers. Uh, we had a second section in the afternoon, which, uh, which looked at documents as objects. So it was kind of shifting gears from the sort of image making practices to looking at um, documents and, and the sort of physical material uh, as a sort of physical or material trace. Uh, we had presentations by Kieran Long from the uh, Victorian Albert, who'll be presenting tonight. Uh, Oslo, uh, London-based scholar and writer Tina DiCarlo, and um, Hong Kong-based artist, architects, academic duo team, <laughs> Map Office. Uh, it, you know, in this set of presentations, I think um, what came out was quite uh, interesting was was this notion of time. We we maybe had been thinking about artworks, how artworks come together. When when do we call something um, an artwork, or where where do we locate the work? I think we we would talk about where we're locating the work and maybe this introducing this element of time made us think of, of um, when do we locate the artwork. Maybe it's something that's cited in a different kind of place or is materialized in a different way and um, when it reaches into a museum it, it, it has some kind of shift. But also to think about how the importance of encountering a sort of physical material thing can be different than to encounter um, you know, as sort of uh, encounter sort of mere information. Um, in our third section, we had uh, presentations from um, Barbican Art, Art Gallery curator Lydia Yi and uh, Hong Kong um, Community Museum Project's uh, Siu King Chung, who in this section, it was called uh, Methodologies of Display. So we were looking at uh, exhibition practices. So um, how various kinds of uh, exhibitions that mix different materials that mix uh, documents, uh, documentations of events that happened maybe in the past, or things that might be sort of material ephemera, material support, how these were placed, you know, in some cases with artworks, together with artworks, and how this, how the relationship shifts or changes, but also how this sort of contributes to a wider notion of, of, of uh, visual culture. So that's sort of a, a brief, outline and summary of uh, what, what we've been doing over the last two days. And then um, these next uh, four presentations, I'll just introduce each speaker uh, one at a time as they do their presentations. Uh, and then we'll have a short uh, Q&A. And 